Good day, people of YouTube. What's going on? The name is AK, owner of Extreme Azure Productions, and I'm here bringing you yet another X React video presentation. And today we're going to be talking about the Nintendo 3DS and its potential successor. Now, the 3DS has been out since 2011. That's right, it's been a very long time, roughly about half a decade at this point. And yeah, this console has actually done pretty well, or I should, rather I, sh I should say the handheld has done pretty well. And of course, you know, we have five devices in the entire 3DS family. We have the original 3DS and 3DS XL, the new 3DS and 3DS XL, and the Nintendo 2DS. So in over half a decade, we have five variations and well over 50 million units have been sold. And last year with the release of Pokemon Sun and Moon, the system saw a huge number of sales in both software and hardware. The percentages increased tenfold. And that was also thanks to the release of Pokemon Go, which got a lot of people um, reinterested in the Pokemon brand, which has never really been small, but it got a lot bigger thanks to Pokemon Go. It's amazing that the app isn't even talked about much anymore, but it had an effect even on the handheld title. So some good came of it outside of its own um, market. So that's good. So yeah, the 3DS has been a real success story for Nintendo. Definitely considering the fact that the Wii U did not do as well as it should have, Nintendo was still able to win big with the 3DS, even though it got off to a rocky start as well, Nintendo was still able to pick it back up, you know, they dropped the price early on, they released quality content like Super Mario 3D Land and Mario Kart 7, and that helped drive sales, and has been that way for the past few years, and the handle's been doing pretty good, especially when you compare it to Sony's PS Vita, which was supposed to be the 3DS killer, I remember when, uh, shortly after the 3DS came out and wasn't doing so hot, and Sony was hyping up the Vita, and everyone was like, oh yeah, Sony's gonna get it this time. You know, Vita's gonna swap the floor with the 3DS. And we saw how that turned out. <laughs> the Vita at this point has sold roughly about the same amount as the Wii U, whereas the 3DS has sold, like I said earlier, well over 50 million units worldwide. So compared to Vita's about 13 million units, yeah, it's obvious who won. Now, you know, the Vita had its own thing going on, so it was never really... If, despite the fact that it was a super powerful machine, I mean, for a handheld, it was powerful, and compared to the 3DS, it was a monster, because the 3DS was basically like in the realm somewhere between a GameCube and Wii, whereas the PS Vita was, was some would say, you know, pretty darn close to that of the PS3. So yeah, the massive gulf in power, but the weaker system still managed to pull ahead. That shows that specs aren't everything, people. Content. Content. That is the big advantage that the 3DS had over the Vita. It had quality content, a steady stream of big content, and unlike Sony, Nintendo has not stopped producing first-party software for its system. So that goes to show you, specs aren't everything, and that's what I hope for with, with the Switch. You know, it's not as powerful as PS4 and Xbox One, but it can still sell very well just because of quality content. After all, a console is nothing without its library, okay? Nothing. That's why they're called <clears throat> game <clears throat> consoles. Let me say that again for the people in the back. Game consoles. Okay, now. Let's continue on with the discussion. So Nintendo has discussed the likelihood of them developing a th successor to that of the 3DS family. Basically, President Kimishima said that when he was asked about if there could be a market for a future 3DS, he said that the two devices have many differences in terms of elements such as form factor, weight, price, and games. He's talking about 3DS coexisting with the Switch. And Kimishima believes 3DS can be appealing for parents to purchase as their first gaming system for their children because of those factors. He concluded by saying that there is a different demand and market for 3DS as a portable system from Switch and for a next handheld, Nintendo will keep considering it as always. And then another Nintendo executive stepped in, Mr. Shinya Takahashi. He said about a new portable, he explained that Nintendo is always thinking about its next game device. And this is something that they've said before. So the answer is, we are always thinking about it rather than there is or there isn't a 3DS successor. So basically, they're not coming out and saying for sure yes or no. They're saying that 
The 3DS and the Switch can coexist, and they've already stated that they intend to keep the 3DS going for a little while longer. And they also stated that if there is to be a 3DS successor, you know, they're thinking about it. Now, um, Super Metal Dave 64, he did a video on this, and he brought up the fact that if Nintendo wasn't working on a brand new um, handheld, then President Kimishima could have just said, well, we're only focusing on 3DS and Switch right now. We have nothing to announce at this time. But he actually went ahead and elaborated on the question, giving a somewhat definite answer. Somewhat. He said that, yeah, you know, we were focusing on 3DS and Switch. You know, they had they appeal to different markets. But we, and then Mr. Takashi chimed in and said, yeah, we're thinking about it. So the, between the two of them, they like I said, they didn't give a yes or no answer. And that's what Super Metal Dave 64 was bringing up, is that if there wasn't anything, then they would have said that they're not bothering with that idea right now which is something that nintendo has always done in the past you know they love being vague and they're still vague here but they love being vague and if they really wanted to be vague they could have said nope switch 3ds that's all you need to know goodbye but they didn't they elaborated on it so that does give the impression that maybe a system is in the works now nintendo stated in the past that they begin thinking about their next system as soon as they release the current one so i'll uh, Going by that statement, we can, you know, rightfully assume that, for instance, the Switch development began at least in 2013, right? We can also conclude that the th potential 3DS successors development, it, now I'm not talking about actually assembling the hardware, I'm talking about just brainstorming ideas. The 3DS successor could have been like in initial development, the early, early, early beginning stages at least since 2012. Now, the reason why this is such a polarizing topic is because the Switch is acting as both a handheld and a home console. It is a hybrid. I've said this before. The Switch is the first system of its kind. There is nothing else like it. There are things similar to it, but there's really no dedicated console that is both a handheld and a home system at the very same time. There's nothing like it. The Switch is the first of its kind. And like myself and many other have come to the conclusion is that Nintendo is trying to push forward into a one system environment, just like what Microsoft has been doing and basically what Sony is doing now with the PS4. You know, they're pretty much have been ignoring the Vita for a while now. So they even they, you can even say that they are in a one system environment right now. Or two systems if you want to say PS4, Slim and PS4 Pro. But you get what I mean. So yeah, the Switch can act as both a handheld and a home console that gives it the strengths of both of those sides. On the handheld side, you have uh, franchises like Pokemon, Monster Hunter, Professor Layton, and many others that are mostly only on handhelds that do really, really well. And then on the home console side, you have like the big Zelda games, the big Mario games, so forth and so on. You know, franchises like Assassin's Creed, Skyrim, for example, that you really wouldn't see on a handheld. So you have the libraries of those two categories coming together. You have the fact that the with a portable console, you can play it anywhere. Now that the Switch can do that, that that's another strength. And then you also have the fact that, um, Nintendo's handhelds have pretty much always done better than their home systems. When you compare the uh, sales of all of Nintendo's handhelds, they've always outperformed the home systems. And while the home systems have been on a steady decline since the days of the SNES going downward, the handheld systems have just kept going up and up and up, and they've dropped a little bit with the 3DS. Well, I shouldn't say a little bit, they've dropped a lot, but it's still over 50 million units. That's still a number that not even the PS... Well, actually, the PS4 has reached that number, but <laughs> it's still a very good number, is my point, and Nintendo's obviously making a big profit off of it. So, when it comes to that of a 3DS accessor, there's also... Um, so yeah, you know, yeah, Nintendo's handheld systems have done well. That's the point. And now it can the Switch can benefit from having the best parts about a Nintendo handheld and just a handheld system in general. That's gonna help it sell a lot, hopefully. But when it comes down to whether or not there should be another handheld from Nintendo, and not just from Nintendo, just another handheld period, there's the big elephant in the room, and that is, of course, the mobile platforms. The iPads, the iPhones, the Samsungs, the Googles, 
phones, the HTCs, the Huawei's, the, all the millions and millions and millions of mobile devices that are out there. There's a lot, people. There's a lot. And the market that handheld devices have mostly appealed to have jumped ship over to mobile devices. That's why we've seen the 3DS compared to the original DS, the sales difference is still pretty massive because the DS really didn't have to compete or at least not to the same extent with mobile devices as what the 3DS has been doing its entire life. The 3DS launched in 2011, like I said, and smartphones and tablets had already taken off by then and they've just been getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. It's not an uncommon sight to see a little child with an iPad or a smartphone you know that's not uncommon it they're becoming commodities they're becoming as common as buying a watch i guess you can say the same way people buy watches and makeup and perfume and belts and ties and other things that you usually see people with i'm just naming off you know accessories that people usually have people usually have smartphones and tablets i'm in a third world country right now ecuador and I can still see a lot of people walking around with smartphones. This is supposed to be a quote unquote third world country. I'm not saying that everybody has a smartphone, but I'm saying that on average, you see a person with a smartphone. I'm not just talking about any like cheap smartphone. I'm talking about S7s, iPhone 7s, and so forth and so on. So it goes to show you that people love smartphones. People love tablets and it's becoming, I shouldn't say it's becoming, it has become a commodity of the modern age. So with that said, if a brand new handle is to come out, Nintendo is going to have to try and find some way to convince people that they need this. Why should I have another handheld device in my backpack? Why should I have another device that only does, really does one thing? Because you don't use a handheld device as a multimedia platform, you don't. I mean, yes, you can watch um, shows and movies on both the 3DS and Vita, but why would you do that on 3DS with a screen that's only 240p? <laughs> and you're only doing it on a Vita if you really, really want to. You, you most likely have a device that does it way better. So, my point is, these handle devices would pretty much have to become more versatile, right? They would have to fundamentally give people one last reason to take, for instance, their tablet. Like, okay, you're gonna always gonna have your phone, but your tablet is kind of debatable. So if they, if Nintendo were to create a handle that could like be like a really awesome tablet as well, like, you know, great camera, good screen, that is powerful enough to play really great games, that could probably work. But here's the other elephant in the room. There's the Switch. There is the Switch. The Switch, which is doing that already. It's already basically in the shape of a tablet with two controllers stuck to the end, to, to the two ends of it. And it may not be a, a fully multimedia system, but at the end of the day, it's still technically a handheld home console. That's so weird to say, but that's what it is. It's a handheld home console, or rather a portable home console, just to be technically correct. So yeah, there's the Switch. And if Nintendo were to create another handheld system that could possibly steal thunder away from the Switch, a lot of people are now, you know, speculating that it could be like a Switch Mini, for example, where it could just be like a really small, condensed version of the Switch that doesn't connect to a TV, that's cheaper than the regular Switch, that just functions, that has the exact same games. Maybe it's a little weaker just to bring help bring the price down, but it's virtually the same thing just in a fully handheld form, where it cannot be connected to a TV and it's not modular or anything, where it's just the handheld unit and that's it. That could possibly work, maybe. It could be, be like how we now have the Xbox One S and the Project Scorpio or the PS4 and the PS4 Pro. You have two, you have the basic version and the premium version. Which one are you gonna go for? That could potentially work, but still at the end of the day, $299 is not a bad price. Okay, it's not a bad price, so the best they could probably do is just create a Switch Mini that's somehow $200 close to what 3ds is right now wouldn't be bad but it's just like keep it simple you know just keep it simple nintendo like if this system were just really just a smaller version of the current switch then wouldn't have that problem of where nintendo is having to try and focus on two different systems at once because that has been a big problem especially during the wii u and 3ds generation the wii u has a great library of games but it's easy to see that the 3ds for the most part has definitely 
accumulated itself a very robust library of games that is superior to that of the Wii U. There are way more must-have titles for the 3DS, and even some of the Wii U's must-have titles have come to the 3DS, like Super Mario Maker, Yoshi's Woolly World, Hyrule Warriors, you know, they were all ported to the 3DS. Why? Well, because of money, that's why. So yeah, Nintendo has the opportunity to create a possible Switch Mini, and that could, in theory, work, but I really think they should just focus on one platform. This is a platform that can be both. It can be a home console and a portable. So let your portable development teams still create the more simplistic titles to fill in the gaps between the bigger titles. They're doing pretty good this year because we have Zelda at launch, Mario Kart 8 coming just a month after, Splatoon a few months after that, and then of course Super Mario Odyssey after that. And then there is of course a new more niche titles like for instance Xenoblade 2 is coming out sometime I'd say during the fall. So the Switch has a good lineup of big titles already for this year alone. But we uh, of course we're gonna hit a point eventually where Nintendo can't keep pushing out big titles left and right and left and right. They're doing it now, but they may not be able to do that forever. So it would make sense if their handout teams continue to just focus on the Switch, just make those smaller games to fill in the gaps. Cause that is the biggest problem that home consoles, Nintendo home consoles rather have had, is that they've lacked momentum. Because third party game, um, developers have not been there full force. So it was mostly Nintendo supporting their own systems, minus the Wii, minus the Wii, don't count the Wii in there. So it was mostly Nintendo supporting its own systems. And yes, they created really great games, but those great games were months and months and months apart from each other. And the Wii U is the grade A best example for that. The best example for such an unfortunate thing. So hopefully Nintendo is really just saying that they are thinking about it. Maybe they might create a successor just to have, you know, like a little throw cushion just in case something goes wrong with the Switch, but we'll have, just have to wait and see. Okay, I'm gonna wrap this video up here. It is getting very long, I apologize, but I just wanted to put my thoughts out there just to throw it all together. I like the fact that the Switch is a hybrid. I think Nintendo should just focus on that. It can do both, let it do both on its own. Don't worry about a 3DS successor. Let the 3DS run out of steam naturally, and once it's gone, just let it go away. No more handhelds only a hybrid system make it work nintendo okay guys that's it for this video hope you enjoyed it leave a comment down below tell me what you think about this idea should nintendo create a new system a new handle system go ahead leave that comment down below and i'll catch you in the next video have a good one